Oh, we need to back up a little bit. There we go. That's better. Okay, enjoy your new rewards for ranked. What is the skills? device that deals damage and disables enemies for 10 seconds. Oh, wow. Ultimate death totem. Drop a totem that protects users from death. Instead of getting killed or down, you'll return to the totem. Oh, wow. Passive. You can you crouch, walk faster than you crouch walk faster it can climb walls higher oh. I don't know I might sp uh, spend some money to get these I have no use for Octane at all Watson does kind of interest me a little bit so does Revenant alright well, let's get started Alright, so I guess I'll talk about this while we're going. Um so yesterday man, I watched the uh the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and I seen Birds of Prey. I, I watched both of them the, on the same day. Um okay. Yeah, so I watched the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and um, Birds of Prey on the same day. Um, I don't know if I want everybody to hear me when I'm saying this. I'm live streaming, so that's why I'm talking about it. Um, yeah, when I'm saying this now, unless you, if you guys don't want to hear me talk about this, this in my party right now, or to my team, you know, don't uh, you know, just make sure you mute me. But um, but yeah, so talking about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and Birds of Prey. Uh, Stay out of my way. I gotta stop following y'all, y'all. Y'all going the wrong way. Too many people over there, man. You don't want to jump where everybody at. Yeah, damn. Shit, this bad place. Yeah, so, Sonic the Hedgehog. So, let me just say this for the record. If you're not familiar with playing games like the original three Sonic games and like uh, Sonic and Knuckles then they kind of make it easy for you to understand what's going on uh, like it's not one of those uh, crap. it's not one of those movies where they make such a video game reference or such like a cartoon reference that you know you don't understand like what's going on in the movie so that's Team at. Need to find my team before I get myself into too much. Did both of them died. No wonder. Man, I can't even focus right now. Is he finna get something? Then yeah, let me get to him anyway. Fuck it. I'm coming to y'all, but yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog, man. Uh, I watched the movie. It was good, and they made it to where you didn't have to know about 
like the past Sonic the Hedgehog games are like cartoons to understand what's going on because sometimes when you get movies like this like they'll make such a heavy reference to past material that you kind of get lost in all the inside jokes and things like that um so ain't no way I can make it to y'all man I can't even get around this big oh, that's why I said don't land over there y'all that's, that's a big mistake that people make y'all go where everybody at that's not a good that's not a good thing I can't even get over there bro The ring. Oh, jeez. We really messed up. Why did distance to the ring at only 45 seconds? Yeah. So the Sonic movie, um, it started out kind of like, you know how they got those movies where like it's the, the movie starts off at the ending. And then it pauses and it be like, well, uh, you know, I bet you're wondering how I got here. It hit, it, it hit you with one of those. <laughs> it hit you with one of those. And I was like, dang, y'all really did the cliche. But it's Sonic. They had to make it family friendly, I guess. And that's the only way they could do it, I guess. I, I don't know. But they did a pretty decent job with it. It wasn't a, it wasn't a bad movie. So it starts off with... Um, Sonic being, I think, on Mobius, that's, that's the name of his home planet. I ain't, you know, been like the most savvy information guy, you know, out there. Like, I know about Sonic, I just don't know about, like, the lore and all that. I just played the games and just beat them, you know. So, if I don't get the, the name of some of these things right, just forgive me. But, yeah, they ended up on Mobius, um... And, uh, well, they started on Mobius when Sonic was just like a baby, just running around Green Hill Zone. Um, make sure I don't do anything. So he runs into, like, he's just running around being like a little city little baby Sonic, or like a little baby hedgehog or whatever. And eventually, he ends up going back to, I guess, his house or whatever. And... I guess the owl, it was, it was like a mother owl or something like that that was been taking care of him ever since he was a kid and um, or ever since he was born and all of a sudden, you know, while they're talking all of a sudden out of nowhere uh, a whole bunch of echidnas out of nowhere just started attacking um, I guess because they wanted whatever powers Sonic was born with uh, they wanted them for themselves you know, because the echidnas, you know, they protect the emeralds, even though the emeralds wasn't even mentioned in the movie the entire time. You know, the echidnas was there. The echidnas was in the movie. And, um... Somebody over there. Good as dead anyway. I don't think I can run fast enough to get out of this. I'm probably dead. Yeah, I think I'm going.
I'm getting so lost in this, I'm, I'm forgetting to talk about the movie. I know where I left off at, the echidnas. So, so forgive me if it seemed like... suicide Thank you. I'm coming this way. There are people nearby. Damn thing on close. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> I was losing anyway. But um, yeah. Uh, so the movie it starts off in uh in Green Hill Zone, on well on Mobius is Green Hill Zone, and um. You know, Sonic, he's running around. He's just being like a baby Sonic, uh, full of energy, um, just going all the way around and all that, all over. And he runs back home into his uh, his little hut where this large owl who's been taking care of him, large owl um, who's been taking care of him since a baby, a female owl, <gasps> pretty much been his mother and his caretaker since he's been born. And... Um, that's one thing they they, they, they did. They kind of like ventured off from, you know, like the 1990s Sonic cartoon and like Sonic Underground and things like that. You know what I mean? So they, they kind of told the story a little bit different than what, you know, if you're familiar with the 90s cartoons and the, the past Sonic games uh, lores, then you would know that, you know, that's not officially how Sonic started, but it's a movie that's they're kind of telling a different story and things like that. So that's how they go with it. Um, so yeah, he runs back home and when he's back home, he's talking to the owl and all of a sudden, uh, these echidnas, uh, just start, or this tribe of echidnas, you know, that's like the same tribe that, uh, that Knuckles is from. And he, um, you know, in, in that group, they just start attacking, you know, Sonic, uh, and the owl trying to capture Sonic, I guess, to get, get him for whatever powers that he has. Because he was born with these powers of super speed, which basically reminds you of like the speed force from like the Flash and the DC universe. Um, you know, which, where originally Sonic was just a fast hedgehog. You know, he wasn't necessarily born with any special powers per se, but in the movie they gave him special powers. And one thing I like to say is that I'm glad they took initiative to after after the big uproar. Because when this movie was first created, they made Sonic look like a a a whack job and I wish I was on my OBS but OBS has been acting up so I can't be on it but you can google Sonic the Hedgehog movie look at the original design for Sonic he looks nothing like the way he was, he looked in the movie uh, now so they changed him up to actually look like Sonic I will just say it like that he actually looked like Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> uh, 
and not some cosplayer in a Sonic suit, you know. But yeah, so after the the uh, the echidnas was trying to attack him, the owl gave uh, Sonic a bag of rings, you know, the rings that Sonic normally uses to uh, to keep himself alive. He ends up getting that. Um, and uh, the owl uses one of them to transport him to Earth, which is on like the other side of the universe or whatever. So transports him there as a baby um, to a town called Green Hills. Of course, you know what that's a that's in reference to. And um, you, and Green Hills is basically like a quiet town. Nothing really happens there. Kind of, it's protected by literally like two cops. <laughs> what? What have you? One guy, one of the guys who stays at the station. I don't. I, I forget his name, but the focus is around Tom Wachowski, which is kind of like the family name of police officers that have been protecting Green Hills for like generations or whatever. And so, um, you know, Sonic, he's, you know, it, it kind of skips time. Because Sonic is kind of like by himself the entire time. He can't really let nobody know that he's there, basically. So he's kind of been living in the shadows of... Of society. To where, you know, he's... He's... Viewing... He's like watching TV from different people's houses. You know, he learns about comic books and things like that. From doing things like that. And, um... You know, any type of abandoned type of... Even though they don't show this... As time went on, you know, from a baby, he eventually has, uh, like, he makes himself, like, a little den in, like, the the forest, almost, uh, like, a forest area. He makes, like, an underground bunker, basically, and it's a bunch of stuff, like, magazines, beanbags, uh, lamps, you know what I mean? Just random things, I guess, he could find over time of him being on Earth, and he just, uh you know, tries to make life the best that he could for the time that he's there until he feels like he needs to leave whenever somebody else tries to come and try to uh, capture him or tries to take him and try to get his um, his powers or whatever. You know, he has his bag of rings so he can transport him somewhere else. So the owl gave him, like, a map of different, like, planets to where, okay... All you got to do is just think about the place you want to go, toss the ring, and a, and a teleportation circle is going to open up and it'll transfer you right there. So, um, they actually made a video game reference when he, when he first did this, and it was actually Mushroom Hill Zone from Sonic and Knuckles, uh, the original Sonic and Knuckles game um, on Sega Genesis. You know, he that was supposed to be the next place he, gonna, he was going to travel to should anybody else try to come and capture him while he's on Earth. And, uh, yeah, so eventually the movie goes on, you know, uh, Sonic, you know, over time, he's gotten more familiar with the face of somebody, somebody he calls Donut Lord, which is Tom Wachowski, who's just doing, you know, speed, uh, monitoring, like he's just on the side of the road, um, with his, uh, that speed gun, radar gun. I don't, I, I, like my mind is all over the place. I can't think, but his uh he's just monitoring the speed of any animals or any you know car that passes by but no car is passing by at all and he sees a turtle he scans it um with the gun and he just like the, the turtle was going like one mile an hour or whatever like that or like less than a mile an hour <clears throat> and um you know, he's just joking around. Then all of a sudden, he has the um, the speed radar gun. He just has it sitting on his dash. And all of a sudden, like, it just goes off, like, 296 miles per hour. And then you see Sonic in the back of him just, like, making faces and all that. And then he just goes, Sonic runs by it again because he's looking at it and he thinks it's messing up because nothing, he didn't see anything pass him by. So he just, uh, you know, he runs by fast again. Now it's 300 miles per hour. And, um, you know, as the turtle was uh, trying to cross the street, another car comes by and Sonic, you know, catches the turtle or picks him up 
and runs with him to a safe place. And uh, yeah, he um, you know, takes him to a safe place and things like that. So there's this guy called Crazy Carl who's seen Sonic. Well, he hasn't seen him. Like, he, he, he hasn't gotten a clear sight of him, but he basically seen him zipping around, and he called him, he, he calls him the Blue Devil or whatever, and everybody thinks he's crazy and all that. You know, he has, like, a, a picture of, of actually Sanic the Hedgehog. If you know who Sanic the Hedgehog, not Sonic, but Sanic, Sanic is kind of like a, I guess just to say, like, a joke version of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um pretty much like a online meme version of Sonic the Hedgehog and that's the picture that he has so that's kind of like a cool little reference that they did and um so as the movie goes on you know Sonic he's uh watching like this little league baseball game and he waits till nightfall he sees a bat and a glove that you know was just left right there and um you know, and the whole time throughout the movie, you know, he's been lonely this whole time. And it's it's really starting to get to him. So as he's playing baseball by himself, like he's playing first base by himself, outfield by itself, he's the he's the umpire and he's the guy at bat. So you know, he's playing by himself, then all of a sudden, like he hits a home run or whatever, and when he touches home base, he kinda like like it just hits him like he's by himself so he just gets into like this depressed state and he just starts running around the the baseball diamond the baseball diamond so fast and you see like this blue energy just charging up all around him next thing you know he just jumps up and just sends like this shockwave throughout the entire city of green hills and everything just gets shut down for no reason so it pans over to the pentagon where the military leaders they're having like a, a meeting about what could have caused it and they can't figure it out so they call in uh, a weird scientist guy Dr. Robotnik who's who's played by Jim Carrey and Jim Carrey did he's so classic bro he was perfect for that role the only thing I, I had a problem with Jim Carrey in this movie is that I kind of it's not a problem really but I guess just to help with the look of Dr. Robotnik um, a little bit more is that I kind of wish he had on like a fat suit or something like that to um I kind of wish he had on like a fat suit or something to like make him look look like the Robotnik that we know from the Sonic the Hedgehog game, you know. So that that would have been cool. Other than that, he did a gr a fantastic job. Um, with the uh, with the role of Doctor Robotnik, he was funny, he was hilarious. I mean, I I, I honestly can't see who else they could have got to play that part. Like, Jim Carrey was just perfect. He had the mustache on point. He had the Dr. Robotnik, like, the goggles that Dr. Robotnik used to have. He had that. You know, it was, it was good, you know. So, shout out to Jim Carrey for that. Uh, so, yeah. So, as um, so when that happened, they call in Dr. Robotnik to find out. And um, Dr. Robotnik, he shows up to, like, a military base or whatever, a military camp. And, you know, he just jokes around with him. <laughs> Um, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to say too much, but you know he basically like just shuts him down, and he has like this his partner or like his uh, a guy who works for him uh, called Doctor Stone, I believe that was his name, and he just uh, you know he's just making jokes to the guy, talking about who's in charge, who's in charge, I'm in charge, and he starts rambling on how. His, the, 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 the military guy who's in charge there, the, the, uh, the, the sergeant, the commander, he's not, uh, he, he starts going off how he's not impressive and things like that. He, it, it's just a funny little montage of like insults and things like that, that only Jim Carrey will be able to pull off because I don't see nobody else doing that. Um, but yeah, so... When that went on, um, Dr. Robotnik, he, he sends like his his robots out throughout the forest to scan to see if there's any footprints or anything 
to uh to tie the the, the power outage to what's been going on or if there's anything out there that caused the power outage he finds footprints one of the robots finds footprints and tracks tracks him back to to sonic's uh sonic's little bunker and you know sonic he grabs his rings he tries to get anything he can get from like his his bunker or whatever he grabs his ring and he goes to Tom Wachowski, to Tom Wachowski's, um, his garage. He, he takes one of the rings and transports them to his garage because you know he's been there so much, so much, watching TV in the background with him and his wife. Um, and what have you. So he went there. That's the first place he went to. So Tom, he hears something. You know he. He grabs his wife tranquilizer gun. His wife is a veterinarian. Um, and he ends up, you know, getting a, his wife tranquilizer gun, called her about it, and said, How do I get rid of uh, raccoons? Because they had a raccoon problem earlier in the movie. Well, it was always jumping in the trash can, so he just thought it was another raccoon. So he grabs, he grabs his wife, is uh, talking to him about it. And say, hey, don't you shoot that, you know, because she's like a pro animal type of person, you know, with her being a vet and all. Um, but yeah, she, uh, sorry, I had to blow that candle out. But yeah, so she, um, gets hung up on by Tom, hangs up on her, gets the tranquilizer dart. It goes around to see what was causing the noise. And uh, Sonic, in the process of Sonic trying to get a ring to try to transport, because he couldn't do it in time because all the uh, robots and everything was trying to, you know, get him. Um, he couldn't transport to the Mushroom Hill zone or, or the Mushroom Hill uh, zone in time. So he, he ran off to try to get somewhere where he could do it. So he ended up, you know, going to... Tom's garage he grabs a ring and as he gets the ring out he has it out and Tom sees him shoots him with the tranquilizer dart and Sonic kind of like throws the ring as he's falling from the from the tranquilizer and the ring opens up on the floor and his bag of rings falls into the portal on top of like um some building in San Francisco uh, some tech building within San Francisco. And um, the reason why it opened up there, because Tom had on a shirt. Now, earlier in the movie, it was mentioned that Tom, he, he received a letter from uh, San Francisco Police Department that, you know, they wanted him uh, to be recruited out there. Like, they, they were welcoming him, welcoming him to the force out there. So they made plans to move to San Francisco. Tom was getting ready. His girlfriend was, uh, his wife was already at his sister's house in San Francisco with their niece um, and she was there with uh, her niece and her sister and Tom he was getting ready and this day he had on a San Francisco shirt with the with the tech building on it so as Sonic is falling he sees the shirt and he imagines that that place so he when, he, when the ring opens up that's where the, the portal opened up to right above that building so the rings fell tumbled into the portal into that um tom takes sonic puts him in like a little dog cage or whatever and uh yeah they um you know sonic wakes up like a while after trying to figure out what, what the hell sonic is you know or the blue devil they, they figured this is the blue devil that crazy carl was talking about and um yeah man he uh when Sonic wakes up he starts talking to him and Robotnik comes to the house so when Robotnik, when Robotnik comes to the house you know he's questioning him about the power outage cause he he followed the footsteps that he that he found in the forest where Sonic was you know Sonic ran to um to the shed so those footsteps got you know he, he traced those footsteps all the way to that house so as uh, Dr. Robotnik's questioning him, questioning him on, 
you know, what was going on and things like that. You know, he's trying to pose as like the, uh, as uh, like the gas or, or like some type of PG&E guy because he wants to check the power from the inside and all that like that. And uh, he can't do it. You know, Tom wouldn't let him in. So what happens is uh, Sonic, I guess, he makes a noise or whatever like that. And when he comes in the house, he sees a raccoon eating the cake that his wife had bought him in, in celebration. Well, one of the cakes, uh, cause she bought two in case he didn't make it to the forest in San Francisco. She had a cake for that and she had a cake for if he did make it. So it's kind of crazy. So the cake that she left underneath the, uh, the kitchen counter, she ends up, you know, that, that got left there. I guess he took it out cause he was getting ready to eat it or whatever, but the raccoon broke into the house and was eating it on the table, which was the noise that was when Sonic made that little noise or whatever, or the raccoon or whatever made that noise. They went in, you know, Robotnik, he kind of like pushed Tom aside, went in the house, see the raccoon right there and, you know, thought it was nothing at first, but one thing that happened uh, in the beginning of the movie that I forgot to mention as well, Sonic had dropped um, like, like one of his quills um, on his own side of the road when he was saving a turtle or whatever, and Tom picked it up and he held on to it for like the entirety of, of the movie up until this time. So when he, when Doctor Robotnik came and he seen a raccoon, he was getting ready to leave, but the the quill was actually sticking out of the side of the of the table and Dr. Robotnik seen it, grabbed it and he was like, okay, let's try this again so he's seen that and um, Sonic hopped out trying to save it because one of Dr. Robotnik's uh, robots came in and of course he, the guns were pointed at Tom and things like that, he was threatening to kill him and all that because um, really because the Pentagon had called Dr. Robotnik in, he basically had, like, immunity of some sorts to, I guess, do whatever is necessary to find, um, and did whatever was necessary in order to find, uh, find whatever was causing the, the blackout. He found Sonic, and, um, as he's counting down to zero, you know, Sonic, he's behind the table, he's hidden, but he just jumps out in order to stop him because he wants to save Tom because he, he thinks Tom is cool. So, when that happened, uh, you know, a little fight breaks out and all that, and Sonic's zipping around, he jumps on top of the, the robot, and Tom ends up, you know, breaking it, smashing it and all that. And they get in the car and they run off. They drive off uh, as fast as they could. Uh, they drive onto the highway to escape Robotnik. Now, Robotnik, he has like this big 18-wheeler uh, truck. And, you know, as they're driving down the highway as fast as they can, trying to escape Dr. Robotnik, he's chasing them behind the with the... Um, with the... Uh, With the 18 wheeler, you know, Sonic, he uh he's having a discussion with uh with Tom about, you know, cause he spoke on leaving Green Hills and Sonic he doesn't understand why he wants to leave. So in the midst of all that, Robotnik attacks him. Sonic, he, you know, in that's when, when as the viewer you you realize that the thing that's activating these, you know, speed force like powers of Sonic is his emotions, like Anytime his emotions get too riled up, his energy starts charging and what, what have you, and that's when uh, you know his powers activate. So he was talking to Tom or whatever about it, and as I don't I don't remember how he got on the hood of the of the, of the truck or whatever, but he got on the hood of the truck, and he um or did he jump out the back of it? 
I don't remember, but he got off the truck and he, you know, does like a little spin dash, busts one of the wheels on the 18-wheeler, tilts over or whatever, but then another vehicle, you know, comes out of the bottom of the truck and Dr. Robotnik just keeps chasing him and, um, and what have you. So that happened, uh... And then the current machine that you know he's been they've been chasing Robotnik um you know that that gets destroyed and then it goes into like a single wheel robot that's you know again chasing them with like two spikes at the end outside on the side of each uh wheel and um they're trying to get that again they beat that one and then it's just like a little mini helicopter or whatever that's cutting off the the roof of the um, of the truck chops that off you know Sonic breaks apart the grabs it breaks it apart and it's like a little bomb a little ball bomb that's like that sticks to the um, whoever has it so you know they're going back and forth trying to get it off they pull over to the side. Sonic, he's trying to get it off of him. And Tom rips it off of him. It gets stuck to Tom. And it goes back and forth until they stick it to a rock. And Sonic can't get away fast enough. And it blows up and knocks Sonic unconscious for a little bit. And what have you. So they continue to drive. They end up driving to San Francisco or whatever. Go to his sister's house. Um... I go to his sister-in-law's house where his wife is. And, um... Yeah, yeah. Man. He tries to get his wife to figure out what's wrong with Sonic. Or, you know, if he's alive or not. And mind you, th throughout the entire time of this movie, I forgot to mention this again. Sonic has like has on some busted up shoes. He doesn't have the traditional red shoes that we know him to have with the white stripe on it. Um, he just has uh, on some busted up, like just any shoe we can find, basically. And there's holes at the bottom of the shoes and things like that. And um, you know, his socks got holes in it and things like. Like he's just like uh, pretty much. Uh, a running gun, you know, he's basically like a kid in the streets. You know, he has to get anything he can now in order to help himself. He's homeless, basically. Um, so, you know, while he's there, he wakes up and, um, you know, his wife is going, his, his, his wife's sister is going kind of irrational about everything about how much she needs to leave him and wow um, you know being like that typical angry black woman stereotype that always trying to downplay somebody else's situation basically excuse me basically she's acting like that the whole time her daughter, which is, you know, his, which is uh, her sister's niece, you know, obviously, you know, their family. Um, Sonic, he's on the table. Um, and the little girl brings in, she sees Sonic's shoes and, you know, they take them off, they take them off his feet in order to try to, like, I guess, give his feet some air or whatever the case is. But they see his shoes had holes in it. The little girl sees it. She goes to her room and gets like the the red shoes that we know Sonic to wear. She gives them to him in the movie. So that's how Sonic got the red shoes in the movie or whatever. So as that's going on, they finally, you know, since they're in San Francisco, they head to the tech building and Tom, he uses his, I guess his cop savvy to say you know, hey, there's somebody up on the roof trying to jump. And he gets clearance to go up there. Sonic is in, like, a bag. And they made, like, this little joke about, you know, 
uh, while he's in a bag, you know, Sonic is talking, but there's people behind Tom and his wife, and they're just, you know, they look like concerned people because they're wondering if, if, if there's a child in the bag and whatever like that. And the kid is just like, in the Sonic, he's talking, but he's making it seem like there's an actual child in the bag and all that. He's causing trouble for him. So the people, they just kind of like slowly just crawl off the scene, like in like a little joking fashion or whatever. So they finally get up to the roof. They get the rings. Then Robotnik shows up. And that's, you know, a big fight ensues. Sonic throws Tom and his wife off the off the building or whatever. And, um... You know, Robotnik, he had the the quill that he had. He puts it in a container trying to study it or whatever like that. And he basically powers up his airplane um, machine with that, with the same, I guess, speed force. The reason why I call it the speed force, again, is because it acts the same way as the speed force does uh, when, when, when the flash activates it. It's like, it's kind of, it's kind of like he, while he's running fast everything else is going slow around him so while Son while the machines are attacking you know every sonic and then on the roof of the building you know missiles and everything is just flying towards him all of a sudden like time just like stops or whatever but that's just sonic moving fast basically and or rather him slowing down time i don't know what they're doing with this uh thing but but yeah, time seems, seems to just slow down to a crawl, and when that happens, right before I guess it starts slowing down, you see Robotnik getting ready to hit a button, a red button or whatever, and he's trying to activate the quill that's you know, one of Sonic quills that's tied to the machine, so that he can like basically move normal again. So Sonic, you know, he's grabbing all the rockets and all that. He's blowing the machines up little by little and it's very reminiscent of Quicksilver in in the X-Men movie when he was running around trying to get all those kids out the building uh, when the building blew up that's basically what, what that was. It was, it was it was a moment like that so he throws Tom and his wife off the building or whatever like that, grabs the rings throws a ring down um, to get you know, Tom and teleported to safety they end up flying inside of a barn uh, back in Green Hills or I guess in a familiar place in San Francisco or whatever. I don't know because they basically they kind of made it back to where Sonic and Robotnik was or, or, or did let me see. I'm trying to think. Did Dr. Robotnik No. What? Ha yeah. So they he, he threw through the ring. They landed in a barn back in Green Hills and Sonic and, Ro uh, Sonic and Robotnik, they're running around San Francisco uh, trying to, uh, you know, Sonic, uh, Robotnik trying to get Sonic or whatever. Sonic opens up another portal going back to Green Hills. And it's nighttime there. And that's how, and then like, that's when everything starts to unfold for real. And, you know, Robotnik, he's getting ready to beat up Sonic or whatever. And the townspeople, they come out in droves, you know, all 15 of them. Because <laughs> nobody's living in this town, basically. Crazy Carl and all of that. And, uh... Sonic gets up, activates his speed force powers, and he's, like, zipping around, beating up the machine. Again, very reminiscent of, like, the Sonic the Hedgehog games. Um, or beating up the airplane machine that, uh, that Robotnik is in. And so, right before this final hit, uh, he calls out Donut Lord, which is, you know, Tom. He Tom throws a ring to the, the Mushroom Hill Zone, and Sonic knocks Robotnik into the ring, into, you know, that uh, zone. So, you know, they become best friends and all that, happy ending and all. And then after the credits, um, you see... Dr. Robotnik in the Mushroom Zone, he's still alive uh, and he's gather up whatever, I guess machine parts that he needs to try to get back into get back to where he was 
and he's um he looks more reminiscent of the Robotnik that we know from the games today. The bald head, the big wide mustache, his mustache grew out and he shaved his head, I guess, because he's been there for like quite a while because uh, time has passed. And, you know, he's trying to figure out his way to get back and he's just jumping from mushroom cap to mushroom cap to do so. And then all of a sudden, right at the end of the movie, um, you see Tails make his appearance and he's actually looking for Sonic so he you know flies off the flies off the cliff into the distance boom the movie ends so that's basically the entire Sonic the Hedgehog movie yeah so they did a good job with the movie I say they did a very good job with it uh, considering that they're they're changing the story up slightly as to how Tails and Sonic met up um they changed it up as how uh, Sonic got his red shoes. You know, Sonic always had his red shoes on. Uh, who raised him? Uh, the echidnas being after him and whatever like that. Um, that's basically what it was. It was just that. And I can say, you know, like they did a good job telling the, the story of Sonic the Hedgehog from the perspective of a movie. Like they switched it up a little bit. But it didn't do it so much to where it's like you got lost in, you know, they basically just added something to it. You know, that's all it was. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that, you know, it's a couple things that kind of like disappoints me about the Sonic movie. One is that they waited to the very end. I thought Tails would have had more of a, of a prominent role in the movie because they was advertising Tails to be a part of the movie. Um... But he was like at the very end of it. You know what I mean? He was at like the very end. And it was after the credits rolled. So it wasn't even a part of the main movie. So for the people that left the movie while the credits was going on, they didn't even know Tails was a part of it at the end. So they had that cliffhanger ending. ending. So they definitely going to... Uh, Yeah, so um, I kind of wish Tails would have had more of like a prominent role in the movie, but they used him for a cliffhanger. So Sonic, the movie two is going to be out, or is coming, most definitely, because they still got to explain why those echidnas was after him. They have to explain, you know, where Tails came from. I'm pretty sure he's from that same planet, but you never know. Uh, yeah, they gotta explain what happened to the owl. I mean, of course, they probably they're trying to get you to think that the owl somehow got killed, which I which I I don't think happened. Um, the owl probably just got captured. Where's Robotnik at? You know, how Robotnik's going to get off of Mushroom Hill. Uh, and then another thing, this is like the beginning of Paramount Animation. This is like a new studio that Paramount is uh, is promoting. This is the one that made uh, the movie. And Paramount Animation, they haven't... This is like a new studio. So, of course, they're going to put in extra work to get whatever they can get out of it, you know... Overall, it, w it was a good movie. I thought it was gonna suck, but it, it was a pretty good film. You know, they, they like they did good with it, and I just can't wait to see what they do with the next installment. You know, Sonic the movie two. So the, the Sonic movie one was very reminiscent of. I mean, if if you was gonna compare it, it was like Sonic won the game. You know, the first Sonic the Hedgehog game.
Yeah, so Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is going to be about um, I guess about those things. Can't wait to see what it's about though. It's probably not going to come out till 2021. I'm just glad they switched up that uh Oh yeah, it was another part of the movie that I forgot to mention. So at the end of the movie, you know, Sonic, I guess they adopted Sonic as like a a pet or whatever. And somehow they went and got all his his things from that bunker that he was You know, all that bunker he was staying in. Uh, So they adopt the Sonic and they never explain them what, how did they know where to go get his stuff from because when they made the room they made it before Sonic even told them well it was so that's kind of like weird Wow, she literally. <laughs> I'm mad she ran up and put hit and killed me with a punch. You know, that was a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, basically in full. Um, I liked it though. I mean, well, I thought it was gonna suck. I wonder if they, what would have happened if the, I'm, a, I'm actually kind of curious to see the Sonic movie now with that original design that they had for him. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm actually kind of curious now. I'm, I mean, I don't want to see it, but like, I want to see it now. I want to see that whole original design of Sonic play out throughout the entire movie. Well, that had to have been a joke.
don't fly too far off. Like we need to be around each other. I got somebody right there. Oh no, never mind, never mind. It was just a bush.
I think that gun was automatic.
It's a fine line. Avoid death as closely as possible. I accept the challenge. I'm good at what I do. Believe me. This is for champion. Let's just try not to go where everybody else is going. Hey, wait a minute. Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Zip line deployed. I'm on my way, I'm on my way. We are down one. What a waste. Right. If you revive out. him, I got a gun for him. Frag out. This is our chance to recover our friend. Put on, I'm almost there. I'm almost there, I'm coming Contact. to you. Reloading. Enemy taken down. Picked up our friend's banner. We can bring him back.
Listen. For. Let's do this. Pop the smoke, make them broke. The pull toward disorder is relentless. I embrace it. This is your champion. This big white leaf is, big white elephant leaf is. I my bike probably too long. There you go. Trying to land where they ain't got a lot of people, so we can get a, at least have a chance to get some, 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 some weapons. skins yeah, I mean I don't buy skins so I don't really care it's the character oh uh, I'm more worried about the characters I ain't worried about the skins like I like I'll save up huh oh yeah yeah he's real good I mean yeah like he uh well, he's good for depending on the playstyle you you have. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a character that fits my playstyle. He's more of like more like passive damage, and he can set up like little gas bombs and things like that. Yeah, it all well, depends on your playstyle, though. But yeah, he's real good in my opinion. Yeah, like it's a gas bomb. That's his ultimate. He has like he has like uh, just bombs that he can like just toss out. I mean, look, they can actually double as like some door stoppers if you're clever enough. Um, you know, but he, he, yeah, he's pretty good for what he does.
good enough and head over to where y'all are. Somebody right there, or, or that's a cargo bot. Another cargo bot. Right. Got like some level two shields over here. Still in a circle? Yep, we're still in a circle.
And our last one was kind of empty too. Somebody in that building toward the back. That's the one who was shooting at you. It was a Gibraltar. Target spotted, but let down range. I'm going around. Another one. Hold it right there. Hold it behind me. They're behind you. They're behind you. Coming from. Ready. We got bad guys over there. Dang, they behind us. Someone else is over there. I gotta check these things before I go. See, they got things here. I need that. Heard that. I 
That's cool. We in a safe spot. Oh, shit. There's somebody in there. Bless the nurse. Oh, he in there, I think. And dude, like he set up. Oh, shit. Damn. He was right there. Wait, what? what? Is he walking? You like this weird wobble? What the hell? Start finding a way to revive me. That was good stuff, but you can hear yourself. Trying to get me something. Damn, that was tough. I don't play shooters though. Somewhere where they got a lot of attention. Ain't gonna be too many people right there. We can suit up. Ain't nobody following us. We got more than enough time to get suited up.
Wait, what did somebody already get? Oh no, I was gonna say. They had one around in that last area I was in. I think I, I highlighted it, but nobody can got it. Energy ammo. Yes. Climb 
They're way on another side of the map, probably. But we're not gonna hear the shots unless they're close to us. Man, the objective is to win the game, not to necessarily get the most kills. We can win the game without getting the most kills. It's all about strategy. You gotta let them fight out whatever they, wherever they are, and when they get to us, then we focus on that. We just gotta focus on making sure that we're ready for whenever they get around us. So just try to get your ultimate charged up, um, get as much ammo as you need, get your defenses up. That's what you focus on until, you know, you don't go run looking for trouble. Like you wait for it to come to you and then you handle it. Probably only a few teams left because we've been wandering around avoiding conflict. So that's going to increase our chances of winning.
gotta be careful because they're gonna be close by. The, the ring getting smaller. with its own ammo it's limited but just keep an eye out where you put the, the peacekeeper at no 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 it's limited ammo but the ammo comes with it but it's a real powerful gun so you don't want to waste ammo like like playing around with it it's a it's, it's a real real strong gun nah i'm good you keep it second I'm gonna do some scouting y'all just stay right there I'm gonna scout out this area I hear gunshots, I hear gunshots. So they're nearby. Actually only one other only one other team ought to be uh Yeah, let's get back into the like a safe spot. It's likely to be one left. Yeah, like we're gonna be one of the last two teams if we just stay, stay put. Now don't travel away too far by yourself. So you need to be able to know where each other are in case the the gunfight starts. Yeah, like Careful. Oh, there they go. Right there. They... I do not think we're the first to have passed through this area. Others have been through. Careful, you just went in this building. You just went in this building. This one down. That completes the Okay. down right there and that was the end of them. Uh, I mean we we only got this circle right here so they don't
because they're probably still outside the ring. We don't we don't want to get caught up. Right, so let's just hide out in here. Where you at? Oh. Got to scout him out, see where they at first. See him. Our enemies have passed through there. We gotta get back to the ring, get to the ring, get to the ring. I only seen one of them. So it's probably, he probably the last one on his team. So we just gotta be careful. Probably inside the building. inside the building come revive me oh, oh, we gotta be quick gotta be quick gotta be quick
I'm gonna leave this right here because I gotta get some sleep for work. Just leave it like that. Ooh, I know. I know about this. It. I don't play Apex Legends a lot, but you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed my little explanation to Sonic the Hedgehog at least. You know, my game play Apex Legends. I don't play shooters like that. But I'm gonna jump back into it when I get back tomorrow. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. So thank you guys for watching. Peace. See you guys next time.